Uh, well, it's a pleasure to welcome to the show my next guest, starting goalie, Drexel, Drexel Dragons. Do I got that right, Russ? Yeah, you got that right. There we go. It's Ross Blumenthal. Ross, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, you remember the very first time you made a save? I always love to start there. Hear, hear that story. Um, not really. Um, I played with Telly Post when I was a little kid. I started playing goalie in first grade. Um, wasn't really my main position. We kind of had another goalie on the team who was like the main guy. And um, I would kind of come in a little bit because everyone was playing all the positions. Um, so I'd play like crease attack and goalie, but I'm really not the most athletic guy. So I wasn't too good at crease attack and wasn't great at goalie either because I just wasn't naturally gifted. But as time went on, I started playing goalie full time around fourth grade. Um, so I don't really remember a first save because I don't, didn't play a ton until fourth grade of goalie. But uh, once I did, it was all goalie from there. Nice. Uh, so you grew up in the Baltimore area. I uh, did grow up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hotbed of lacrosse. So you start playing, start playing first grade um, and just kind of rotating around and then settle on the position at fourth grade. I mean, what was it about the position or what happened or what made you ultimately decide to pick goalie? Um, I would say, I mean, as I said, I, I'm not, su I didn't love to run. I wasn't super athletic. I have pretty, I was always really good at catching the ball. Like I have really good hand eye. Um, so that was part of it. And like, I also was kind of like smarter than some of the kids in terms of knowing where they would shoot. Like kids when they were really little, weren't always the most smart. And when they'd be right in the crease, they'd get nervous and just throw it high and just throw it. Like if I just kept my stick up, I would just save it almost every time in the, in the crease because kids just weren't, didn't really weren't as smart. And I realized it, I was like, Oh, I can just stuff all these kids on the crease. And I started getting really good at it. And mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is really fun. I'm making a lot of saves just doing this. And I guess I told my dad or something that I, I just wanted to stick with goalie and um, worked out well. And I'm very glad that I, I did. So it's kind of just a mixture of not wanting to run and, and having good hand eye. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, I talk about, you know, like the high school and college level, like reading, reading the shooter um, and, and how that's like a huge part of, of making saves. And it's, it's even more at, at that youth level, right? Because like yeah. kids, you know, they're just like so fixed on where they're going to shoot. And you can see it in every aspect where they're looking, where their shoulders are pointing. Um, and that's cool. Like you were like, all right, I'm going to be a little bit smarter than them. I know where these guys are going to shoot. Uh, and take advantage of that at, at such a young age. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I honestly do that kind of now. I, that's, I'm not like, I'm kind of just a person in tight where I'm just like kind of jumping up, making myself as big as possible because people still get really nervous on the crease and they'll just throw it right in your stick if you keep your stick high. I kind of think I'm just kind of playing, you know, the law of average. It'll hit me, you know, however many saves you need to make on the crease. I'll just keep myself as big as possible. Maybe not bite for too many fakes, just keep my stick up. And if he shoots it low, my feet are there. And I can right. make a lot of saves my feet or my legs. And if he shoots it high, my stick is there. And um, I can just keep myself as big as possible. I'm, I'm more of a just stay there, stay big, instead of all fidgeting all around and flailing my body around and tight. So it's kind of something I've stuck with me my entire career. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, we'll, we'll go through some saves later in this, in this chat, if that's cool with you. But I, I, one yeah. thing that stuck out with me, I'm like, wow, he makes a lot of body saves. A lot of body yeah. saves. Yeah. Um, so how did you at that, then at that fourth grade level, like, you know, how'd you go about learning how to, how to be a goalie, the stance, the positioning, how to make saves? Like what, what was that process like for you? Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky enough that my dad could like, and my parents could both afford, you know, to have me go to goalie lessons and had a goalie coach and go to goalie camps. I had a lot of coaches growing up, but um, people like Tyler Martin and um, Rob Sher, who went to Hopkins, who was a coach at McDonough. Um, Trey Rogers, who I work with a lot now, who Alex Road also worked with, and he talked about a lot on your podcast, who went to Loyola College and high school. Um, and then the Goalie Smith guys as well with Andrew and Mike of Austin, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, so I've had a lot of really good goalie coaches that's kind of shaped me throughout my career. And I've gone to a lot of camps. Um, well, I don't know if you know the Loyola Goalie Camp, the Loyola College. Um, uh, they have a really, really great goalie camp where they have a lot of goalies like Sleepaway camp um for like a week or so in the summertime and you're just getting shot on by the really the loyal players and they bring in a lot of great goalies and I think that's mm -hmm. another just getting a lot of instruction and I've worked with a ton of ton of coaches um um on and off and I think it's really really helped me and I kind of molded my game 
found things I liked in each coach and it's kind of helped shape each one's really helped shape me into the, the player I am today. So I was really fortunate okay. to be able with my parents to help me find some really good coaching. And cause there's a lot of, you know, so, so information out there. And I kind of yeah. could figure out which parts I liked and every goal is different and every goalie has different stance. Some people like really wide or however they like it. And I think I could just really figure out what was best for me and my body type and, and how the mental part of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. There are, uh, I mean, you do have to be careful in a way, but those coaches that you mentioned, all of them just top notch. I mean, especially the goalie Smith guys and, and it was too, is to me like leading that Loyola camp. Yeah. To me yeah. was a big part. Of it, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, just class acts. Um, and, and those guys are awesome. I was going to ask you about that. Cause you know, when you get instruction from one coach, like a lot of times you're like, okay, that's, that's what I'm going to do. You mm -hmm. get instruction from, you know, say call it five or six coaches. A lot of times like the dads will email me and be like, Hey, this coach is telling them this, this coach is telling them that what, what do I do? Yeah. What's, what's your answer I mean, to that? I, I mean, just figure out what's best for you. I kind of think it's kind of an, if a coach is your like high school coach or your team's coach is like, you have to do it that way. Then like, all right, I guess you have to, but like sometimes like, you know, I don't know how I'm going to, I'll try, always try out whatever they say. I would be respectful with them, but like, if it doesn't really work out for you, like these people know what they're talking about. All the people who are coaching, usually they probably have some reason to know what they're talking about. So try it out. If it doesn't work for you after a while, go to whatever works best. And a lot of the stuff that I do now, I mean, I'm pretty late in my career in terms of college, some stuff that maybe I might want to fix that doesn't feel great for me at this point in my career. I'm kind of just perfecting, you know, some of the bad habits sometimes um, and just perfecting whatever works best for you. If for me, like I'm starting to kind of flop a lot more and trying to drop into my knees. And a lot of times I thought that was a really bad habit. And recently, these past couple of years, I think I've made a lot of body saves and really kind of propelled myself low. Um, and it might be a bad habit for some people, but it's something that I kind of have started to like and started to make a lot of saves down low, kind of just dropping to my knees a little bit on these low shots. Because there's not that many yeah. bouncers when you're in college. So they're not going to bounce it over your head because they shoot so hard um, and they're just kind of shooting it at your feet. Uh, so I, that's something that just working on whatever is best for you. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to your answer to that question, I think that's right. I mean, give it a try. Like, unless it's something just so ridiculous that, you know, you're not in an athletic position, like he wants your feet just incredibly wide and you're a small goalie and you're like, I, I that's, you know, any, but anyway, give it a try, see if it works. If it doesn't mm -hmm. throw it out. Right. I mean, I, I yeah. think that's, I think that's a message that has it's like my philosophy as a goalie coach is there's a lot of different ways to play this position. So figure out what works for you. Um, and I've heard that echoed so much on this podcast. Um, I was going to make a come. Oh yeah. Um, so the, so one of the things that, that sort of you're working on, or I don't even know if it's working on, but like have you've kind of adjusted your game is going to your knees during your low shots. And I know a lot of goalie coaches who teach that method. I personally don't. Um, yeah. But that's just one example of like, you know, if the kid does it and he's having success with it, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, rule with an iron fist and say like, you got to stay on your feet because I know that a lot of goalies coaches coach that way and, and goalies like you have success with it. So. Yeah. I honestly wouldn't teach coach either. I, I like to do like lessons sometimes and I, I would never coach dropping to your knees. It's just kind of something as the shots have gotten so fast and I'm pretty unflexible as well I'm pretty tight in my hamstrings and everything it can be pretty difficult sometimes for me to get low and I think it's just something that helped me become pretty explosive I mean help me have some type of explosiveness where it's not just I'm relying on my quick reflexes with my hands something with my body that can really help me propel me low I wouldn't teach anyone to go to drop to your knees especially at a young age yeah um, in warm-ups I'm not dropping to my knees but I notice you know when these when I'm in the game or in practice and live shots sometimes just like the shots are so fast and my hands are like going so hard that it just brings my body down. If that yeah. makes sense to you. Oh yeah. Um, totally. So uh, I always try to stay on my feet, but uh, that's just something in these games where these shots are coming so fast and my hands go and my body is sometimes behind it and it just kind of propels my body to the shot. Yeah. I got to tell you, Rosh, you're, you're, you're telling me I'm not the most athletic guy. I don't have the flexibility. What, no. <laughs> what does got, make you I, such a great goalie? Good. Good, good uh, reflex with my hands. Um, I mean, one thing that I would say is I used, had this reaction ball growing up. I actually have it. I have it over here, actually. Um, I use it in college sometimes. It's like if you use it for baseball, it's got all these different bumps and everything. I would just kind of throw it against the wall with a fiddle stick or just with my hands. And 
I think that's something that really helped me is just get really, really quick reflex with my hands. I think that's what's really made me a really good goalie is just those hand eye reflexes with that ball and just getting yeah. a lot of shots. So. Love it. Love it. What are some other drills that, that you really like to do? Um, I'm kind of just a classic, like get as many shots as possible. Like I'll spend yeah. summers. I I'm more of a outside shot. You know, I think if you can say the outside shots, you know, it kind of all carries over just tracking the ball. I kind of want to just track the ball. I like to get a lot of step downs, a lot of on the runs. Um, I'm more of just a shooter and, you know, turns if there's a feed or on the run, just trying to mimic shots. I don't really do a ton of besides that reaction ball. Mm -hmm. um, really just, just getting as many shots as possible. Smart. Smart. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think a lot of times kids are just looking for too many drills when like the drill that they really need is 500 shots a week. Oh yeah, definitely. Just that's the great thing about goalies. That's just the main thing you got to worry about is just save the ball, make a pass. If you can talk, you can talk. I'm a little bit more quiet, but I mean, you got to be able to talk, but I think it's just, that's, what's really great. Is you got two things you got to work on saving the ball and throwing your outlet pass. I think that's really the big things. And that's really all that's important as long as you can do that the coach will get you on the field. Yeah. Awesome. What about, um, you know, when you were kind of growing up, were there some goalies either at the pro or, or college level that you really looked up to really learned from? Yeah. I kind of think of myself more. I don't know if you remember Pierce Bassett back in the day at Johns Hopkins. Um, my dad went to Hopkins. We would go to almost all the Hopkins home games. Um, I think of myself kind of like Pierce, really tall, lanky guy who um, kind of stayed really patient and just, you know, set and see it. And I think he was something that I really looked up to. We got to know him a little bit. We had a lot of connections with Hopkins, someone I really liked. Um, I also loved Gittleman and Galloway, especially Galloway with his passes. I just remember him making a save at Syracuse and just throwing it to the opposite restraining line. I was like, wow, he, this guy makes some amazing passes. And then right now, I don't think I'm very similar to him in terms of how I play, but I love Jack and Cannon. I mm -hmm. think he's so fun to watch and in terms of him making these saves in tight and he's so explosive he's someone you know as coach Durkin's our defensive coach Tucker Durkin I've been trying to get him to help me uh to meet uh Kincannon because I think he's someone that could really help me out kind of just learning I want to know what his secrets are in terms of how he just makes so many he's better in tight than he is outside which is not what I am I'm more of a you know track the ball type person and I, I love watching Kincannon I think he's so fun to watch same same. And that level of explosion is just like, it's un, I mean, it's the, it's the best explosion for any goalie. And the dude is huge. He's six, four or something like that, you know? So he's not like this, this small guy. Uh, and he's, yeah, he's fun to watch. Yeah. He's like, like he lives in the weight room. Like he's, you see him on Instagram and he's, he's got giant muscles. Like he's doing all these, like, I'm like, what does that have to do with goalie? He's just getting really, really huge and really explosive and something that I would love that I really want to work on. And, steadily getting myself there um closer to it but um i really admire how how explosive he is and i think it's really fun to watch awesome love it love it love it well cool you guys so you're heading into your i guess it's like red shirt senior year this year and then and then one more um yeah. you know what do you from a goalie standpoint are you are you working on anything in particular right now i mean we're, we're recording this beginning of january so you know the the spring practices are, are just starting up you guys are heading into the season or are you just trying to get you know are you just trying to get as many shots as possible what's kind of your strategy right now you know I, a lot of time in the winter was just kind of getting as many shots like winter break I mean getting yeah. Thanksgiving getting as many shots as possible I think right now I feel really good where I'm at um a big problem I have is I'm moving a lot before the shot so I really am really stressing I always have staying patient not moving tracking the ball as I said um, just staying patient and then stepping. I'm more of a lateral stepper. A lot of guys are kind of 45 degree. I'm more mm -hmm. lateral and keeping my hands forward because I kind of notice with me and a lot of other goalies are stepping a little bit too far forward and then their hands are behind them, which is kind of defeating the purpose a little bit. So like right. they're stepping forward and they're like that. Whereas I want to step laterally and keep my hands forward so that my body is more behind it. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm moving before the shot. I'm stepping forward which is not what I want to do. So that's something that I really try to stress myself and stress with stress with some goalies that maybe I've coached in camps or something like that is stepping a little bit more laterally, keeping your hands forward, extending your hands. That's something that um, Trey Rogers, um, who I work with 
a lot currently is really stressed with me and I'm just trying to stay patient before the shot and I think just settling yourself down um especially in the games because you're yeah. so nervous right. you're jumpy if you're not going to do it in practice it's gonna be tough to do it in the games when you're even more nervous and jumpy so just really settling myself down not overdoing the shots because sometimes more shots I get now as I'm older I can develop develop some more bad habits like mm. moving before the shot so be it so I'm really just trying to settle myself in get the get a happy medium and uh just kind of work on helping the team kind of mold together as we're going towards uh hoping you'll get another CA championship run. Yeah. How do you uh how did you know how do you know that you're moving early before the shot? Is that is this just something you feel? Are you watching tape? Like how, you know, if there's a young goalie listening to this and I'm sure tons of goalies have that problem. It's a very common mm -hmm. problem, right? Like, you know, the the shot comes and and you're not in like a balanced set stance because you feel like oh, I gotta go, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta explode, um, and and then you start guessing. Anyway, tons of problems. But I'm curious, you know, how you went about diagnosing that problem. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, as Lisa, I mean, older, you can feel it. You can feel yourself moving down. Um, some things, you know, yeah, I would say film. You obviously can see it. You just gotta really be able to slow it down. Yeah. But just sometimes you can feel yourself. I sometimes have this problem where I lean to the left a little bit and you can kind of feel yourself. If they shoot it to the right. You're like, Oh, I didn't have a very explosive step to the right. I wonder why it's probably because I lean to the left or if they shot it high and I drop my stick, you're working against gravity. It's a lot harder to go back up than it is to go back down. So, um, you know, if you're not really getting very explosive to one part, maybe you're moving before the shot because you're moving the opposite direction or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I'd say film and then you can also just kind of feel it. Yep. Yep. Love it. Um, I was going to ask about, um, I was going to ask about your style. You touched on it briefly uh, a little bit, you know, your lateral stepper, but also when I, when I watch the tape, I mean, your, your heels on the goal line um, on, on your arc. And I'm all, I'm curious if you've always played like that. I say as I got older, I moved towards that as the shots got really fast in college. When I was younger, maybe probably not as much um, because I would just make a lot of body saves. I mean, with those coaches that I had growing up, my positioning, I think, is really good, which is a big reason why I make so many body saves. I think I'm usually in pretty good position um, and I'm just kind of making a lot of saves just staying there, which makes it really easy as a goalie. If you can get a really good coach to really pat down positioning, that's why, you know, I sometimes I'm like, if I don't see the ball at all, I might be able to be, have the 30% save percentage just staying there because I think my positioning is just good. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's something that really, I think, sets me apart from other goalies is even though I'm kind of skinny, I'm tall, makes me look a little bit bigger in the goal than I, maybe I am, but uh, I think it's just all about the positioning. So true. So true. Yeah, it's like half the battle of just being in the yeah. right spot. Um, mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that that shallow arc, you know, heels on the goal line gives you. And we'll take a look at some tape, but like when people are sweeping, right, you don't have that much movement to be in the right position um, when they eventually take the shot. Um, whereas if you're out further towards the goal, it's actually a lot of movement and goalies can get lost on the arc and not have great positioning by the time they shoot. That's, yeah, that's a pretty big reason for. I think getting the extra time to react to the ball is a big reason for that slip that shallow arc and also just way easier to be in position because you have such a small step and there's less steps you have to make to stay in position. So I would agree with that 100%. I think uh, yeah. um, that arc is, I think it's almost most of the goalies have really uh, in college, I would say have played pretty shallow arcs. I think something I'm actually trying to work on a little bit is when they're kind of in that angle doing that uh, Dylan Ward type of thing where he just steps out, not quite as far as he does, but yeah. he just makes it, he shaves. It's, it's kind of difficult for me to try to force myself to do it. Cause like the ball hurts, obviously. So like, <laughs> it's tough for me to be like, I'm just going to stand there and just please hit me. It's, yeah. it's tough. Something that I'm really trying to force myself to do. Um, it's something that I'd love to adapt to this upcoming year. But um, besides that, I would, I definitely like to stay in. Yeah. I think there's certain situations where it makes a lot of sense to come out. Um, it's very, it's very, even, even if you are a shallow arc, you know, flat arc uh, goalie, there's a lot of situations, but for me, like I'm five, eight, so I'm so small. So like, even if I come out like an, at, like on outside shots, I'm not taking up that much more of the goal, right? I really have to 
I really have to catch it. I really have to make that save, right? As opposed to letting it, letting it hit me. So um, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I've, I know a lot of goalie coaches that are like, yeah, you got to come out. You got to, you got to cut down the angle. And I've always described it as like, like if I'm trying to catch a grape, like some, my friend throws a grape at me and I kind of catch it in my mouth. I actually do want a little bit of space in between him and I, so I can like see it and go for it. You know? Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I, I think teaching kids young, maybe not to go out so far. I don't, I don't think is, I think we really should be teaching a lot more kids to stay in, even if it's not, maybe they won't make a save early on as many saves because, mm. you know, the shots are going to come so fast when they're older that if you're stepping so far forward, as I said, your hand's going to be behind you. Like if it's inside hip, you're going to be twisting your body. I think teaching kids at a young age really to, to stay dialed back and just see the ball and be ready for when they are coming fast. And I also think that a lot of those coaches that are really stressing, oh, come all the way out are probably a little bit older, maybe played when the shots weren't coming as fast. Yeah. You know, I had a lot of goalie coaches where I'm like, and who were like great players, like some of the best goalies back in the day, maybe in like the seventies or the eighties or whatever, like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure the fat shots are coming fast, but they probably weren't coming as fast as they are now. And I think the game was definitely played a lot different now than it was even 10 years ago. I think yeah. the shots are so much harder. I think kind of the younger goalies might know it a little bit more. Cause you look at, you look at who's playing out there. They're not really, besides Dylan Ward, they're not really coming out, stepping so, so far forward. I think they're really trying to dial themselves in and just give themselves time to react. Right. That's what, that's what I look at. Like when everyone at the professional level is doing like a certain thing, like there's a reason. And when anyone at the top D1, D2, D3 program are doing a certain thing, there's a reason they're doing that because they're having success with it. Um, And the game has changed. I mean, you know, this, the stick technology alone like the mesh and the and the offset heads and like you know the the what we know about building muscle and like building in the weight room and like shooting technique I mean it's just you know the game has changed people are shooting way faster like that is no that is no joke I think I saw that Nick what's it Nick Deagle rip one 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 twenty one twenty five yeah it, it's it's coming in I mean you can see it in the safe percentages I mean now if you're above like it'd be like 60%. I feel like back when I was a young kid in college was like a lot of goalies were getting that. And now mm-hmm. like you're above like 53, like that's awesome. Like if you were below 50%, like seven, eight years ago, whatever, like that was bad. Like I'm like fluttering around 50 right now. Like yep. it's it's tough to make saves right now in this, in this day and age in college across because the shooters are so it, good. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I had a uh, Scott Bacigalupo Princeton goalie from the nineties. I think he saved it at 73, 73. Yeah, that, Will we ever see a goalie make 73% save percentage ever again? Yeah. We, we have, um, we have a really prominent alumni named Chuck Vincent at Drexel who had like 30 saves in a game and yeah. he had the record. He's a pretty big donor and he hangs around the team and he's like, he's pretty old right now. And he's like talking to me. He's like, yeah, like, you think anyone's ever going to beat that? I'm like, I can personally guarantee you no one will ever beat that record because I don't think anyone's going to be able to make 30 saves in a game. And he also had like 70% save percentage, like something yeah. like you said. Yeah, yeah. No one's going to beat some of these old goalie records because the shots are coming so hard. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I'm curious how you ended up at Drexel. Um, you know, you start to have some success in, in high school, um, I imagine. Uh, but what, what was, you know, how did your recruiting process go and, and why, how'd you end up at, at Drexel? You know, honestly, I don't think I was really that great in high school. Um, Drexel was really the only D1 team that offered me. Um, uh, I was really looking at some of the higher D3s. Um, Tufts was like my dream school. I love Tufts. I love Boston. They didn't really recruit me. I was, and Amherst recruited me. They were really they were in on me. I would have gone there if they had offered me. Um, I was like a finalist. So they picked another goalie like um, that summer going into senior year. Um, I loved, I looked at Dickinson, Bates um, came in there. So some of the really high D3s were the ones I was looking at. And Drexel mm-hmm. was kind of just like, we're not going to recruit another goalie. Um, we have four already. If you're going to come, that's great. You can kind of sit on that. Um, if you don't come, that's okay. So they were really great with me kind of saying, so I re- committed 
summer going into the senior year after I kind of realized that the Amherst and um, wasn't really going to work out. And um, I honestly didn't love my first visit with Drexel, but um, after I committed, I was kind of like, you know, I think this is good school. They've got a really good co-op program where they help set you up internships. They've got good business school. Um, and I was like, cause I also, I wanted to play and I didn't know how much I'd be able to play at Drexel at D1. That's tough. I, my high school team also were B conference at my AA. So we're the conference below Calvert Hall and all that. God, um, yeah. Like we, it's where Kyle Harrison went. We have some good players, but it's not what a lot of these other D1 kids are going to. It's, it's no IMG or Hill Academy or anything like that. So mm-hmm. I committed to school and then had my visit again after I committed and absolutely loved the second visit. And, and I've loved the school. It's been a dream come true. It's been better than honestly I could have ever imagined in terms of school, my friends, um, lacrosse. So I'm really thankful I decided to make that decision. I'm thankful Amherst didn't work out with some of the tough things going on in their program. Um, even though it's a great school, I, I love Drexel. I love where I'm at. Um, and I honestly um, just, it, it worked out great. Yeah. Awesome. Good to hear. Good to hear. It usually does. It usually does. Yeah. You know, every time I've heard these recruiting stories and, and even like thinking about my own, you know, I had my heart set on one school um, and I didn't get in. Right. And I don't even think I would have liked it. If, if I'm being honest, like just, I, I went and visited friends there and I just had, I had a great college experience and, and um, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like you did too. So that, that or you're, you're still in it. Um, so yeah. Most, awesome. Yeah, most definitely. And also, the stuff that I thought was really important when I was even in junior high school in terms of what I thought I wanted for a school is not what I would think is important. Like what I love about school right now in terms of like my priorities then were like different than now. Like I thought I'd be really happy at a really small school like Amherst where there's not much to do, but it's a really great school. I think now I think I would have hated that. I like that Drexel's mm-hmm. got, I don't know, 10,000 or whatever. And mm-hmm. it's got sports and, um, I, I just really love, it's just, it's just very different. I love being in a city. I w- wouldn't want to be in the middle of nowhere. I love being able to go into the, in the middle of the city in Philadelphia or go to a Sixers game or, um, go wherever and not have it be super cold. Like it is in up New England. it's cold. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like that. So yeah, I think a lot of my priorities are different. So I think that's really tough. I can't even imagine what it was like my freshman year when all these other kids were definitely committing. So, um, I think that's also something to keep in mind if you're coming up into your recruiting process that your priorities may change. Great, great point. Great point. What, what would you tell, um, you know, a high school kid that's, that was in your situation where like, maybe they, they're not going to, they're not at like a top tier high school, um, but they still want to play college or lacrosse. What, what's your advice for them? Yeah. I mean, so I was, it was an okay high school. I mean, so luckily I was in Baltimore, so I got to play with FCA Maryland. So I was playing with all the, in the summers with all the Calvert Hall and boys mm-hmm. Ladden and Gilman and all those guys. So yeah. I was on a good club team in high school um, and also just getting as many shots as possible. I would get shots. all I don't even know how many days a week, but I would, I'd get shots. A lot of Hopkins guys, my kids, my dad is mostly how they would come and shoot on me. And my, um, mm. That worked out really well in high school. Um, you know, like Forrest Smith was someone who really shot on me a lot. He was a great player at Hopkins when I was in high school. Um, so I would say just getting as many shots and getting on a good club team, I think, because that's all that's really important is that club team. That's how you're going to recruit. You're not going to get recruited really from your, your high school team there. They have the coaches right now. They, they have their own practice. They got to worry about in the summer. That's when you're getting recruited. So mm. find a way to get on a good, good club team. Cause that's a really important thing. And then just getting as many shots as possible um, by some really top tier players. If, if it, or go to some camps or something, find someone new. Um, or just even your friends and just getting is better that way. Uh, that would, that's just the best advice I got. Yeah. It's great advice. Yeah. Or, you know, with Instagram or, you know, the social media nowadays, like, you know, you can find a college that's in the area, do a little research and find these guys on Instagram, um, and say, Hey, do you want to come shoot on me Saturday or Sunday? And I bet they'd love to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've had that, uh, I've definitely done that. And when I was in Philly um, around during COVID time, I got an internship and not too many of my teammates were here uh, um, that summer, you know, that March of 2020 or that June of 2020 and right. found some people on social media. And um, some people actually DM me on social media because they were like, hey, are you here this summer? Do you want to shoot? And had some like this kid from Bowden that I've been shooting with for like three years now who 
just actually DM me. I was like, Hey, do you want to shoot? I saw that you're here in Philly. Yeah. Um, I never met him and we've been shooting and he's a really good shooter. So I think that's really another really great way to do it. That's a great point. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Well, cool. Uh, you get to Drexel and I think you end up earning the, the starting role your freshman year. Is that right? Uh, yeah, it was like the first four games I didn't play. I was actually supposed to redshirt. And then, uh, luckily, uh, I ended up getting in there and made the best of it. Yeah. How did that, you know, how did that situation kind of come to be? They just they need, we need to switch it up a goalie or, or was it like, well, so, I mean, the goalie last year graduated before I got there graduated. So we knew there'd be a new goalie. Yeah. Um, they kind of had it picked out like the first day of practice. I don't know how they picked out this one kid. He was like supposed to be the starter of the whole year was the first goalie in thought he played pretty well the whole fall. Um, first game comes struggles um and then he gets pulled the second game they put in another goalie um he goes in does pretty well then struggles again and then one day um and I I thought I was playing really well in practice at that time I was hovering around the number two or three goalie out of the five um so I was playing pretty well in practice um did really well in the fall scrimmages um but Drexel has this co-op program uh where they as I said hook us up with internships or help us get internships and so you're there you're there for five years because you're doing these six months in internships so oh, most cool. kids and almost all redshirt unless you're like gonna play so right. if they are on the side of caution and they redshirt you and pretty much every goalie redshirts unless you're gonna play and so the plan was to have me redshirt and then I knew I was doing well in practice and coach kind of brings all five goalies in his office um the Monday after um we lose we got blown out by Jacksonville actually so we thought we should have won it's a pretty bad trip. And he was like, look, guys, we're not making a lot of saves. Defense isn't playing great either, but we're not making a lot of saves. We're going to give all you an equal chance to play in practice week. Everyone's going to equal reps. Whoever plays the best is going to start that game. We were playing St. Joe's. We were actually playing two games a week. We were playing St. Joe's on Friday, Villanova on Sunday. And um, uh, I think a lot of people kind of thought that, that was there, like trying to see if I was ready to do it. And I, I played – pretty well that week I honestly played better the weeks prior to that that week of practice I played well but I was play, thought I was playing really well the weeks prior when the other goalies were playing I played good enough and uh coach kind of pulled me to the side uh like the Thursday of that week and was like hey we're gonna start you and I was extremely nervous I was I honestly wasn't ready at the time I think I played well enough and we ended up beating St. Joe's that Friday and then we upset um 15th ranked or whatever ranked they were ranked something Villanova who uh, you know Colin cursed and everything and they uh and I played a really really great game especially in that Villanova game and stuck with it and made it all the way to the CAA championship and uh lost to Towson that year but it was a really great season it was a great experience because honestly like playing not as decent college I mean decent high school but nothing like I was playing against in college and I thought it was a really great experience definitely tough mentally um you know yeah. getting shelled from like 18 yards and then like I made the saves when I needed to I made the saves in like the big I started out really bad every first half I was awful almost and every second half I would come back and make like kind of like that that Notre Dame game every second half I would kind of make the saves when I needed to and we had a really great team that year and won a lot of games so I was really thankful for that opportunity and then it worked out I got that extra year with the COVID so um mm -hmm. it was definitely very thankful that um I got to play that for that first year that's awesome. Awesome story. How do you, yeah. um, what's your strategy for like sort of calming yourself down or maybe you're still working on it. If, if you're telling me the first half of the game is not, is not your best, but like, you know, a lot of goalies find themselves in that situation, whether it be like huge tryout and they know a bunch of coaches are watching or, or a championship game or, you know, just a really big game and you get so excited. What, what's your strategy of kind of, you know, calming yourself down? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough. I mean, kind of just like go out there and just do it. Like it's going to happen. You're going to be nervous the whole time and whatever happens, happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, def it's difficult to say. I get that question a lot, but just go out there, stay patient, see the ball, you know, get the next one. And like once you get that first save, it gets a lot easier. Once I get finally yeah. get hit in the chest, got you settle down once you get hit if you don't get hit and you're really nervous and you're not seeing the ball at first it can be tough and I've had you know I've had two two games both of them against Delaware um coincidentally that um I just really struggled and besides that once I start getting hit with a shot get an easy save once you get that first save 
it gets a lot easier. People are, you know, cheering you on and yeah. you finally throw that ball on your stick, whatever. Once you get that first save, it all gets okay. And I also kind of trusted myself that I've, you know, sometimes even lying to myself, and especially my freshman year, I just be like, look, like, I would lie to myself, but look, I'm the best player out here, even though I wasn't. I would be telling myself that. Um, and I think that's something that really helped me is just, you know, not cockiness or arrogance, but like inside your head, you got to think that like you're ready, you're the best out there, you're going to save every shot. Um, and you have to trust in yourself that you'll be in the right position, your teammates put you in the right position. So yeah. um, I just kind of think trusting that, you know, they're going to hit you also. That's something that also brings me a lot of pieces. I know I have really good position, whether I'm seeing the ball or not they're going to hit me enough times. I just got to make a couple of saves to my stick. And then I can really, you know, set this game open in the fourth quarter when I, I really settle down. Cause that's, that's when I'm at my best. So um, that's something that I really focus on. Yeah. It's um, you know, to your point, like you have to have this delusional level of confidence um, as a goalie yeah. and, but to be fair, like you've put in the work, right? Like it's yes. not a total lie, right? You, you no no you've seen hours and hours and hours and thousands of shots. So, you know, you might think it, Hey, like I'm I, okay. I'm not the best goalie in the world. Right. But you know, you're up there and, and yeah, I, you have to have this yeah. delusional level of confidence. Yeah, exactly. I knew that I could do it, but I was telling, how to tell myself like I'm the best, like, mm -hmm. even, so maybe, yeah. but like kind of the, the more confident, like I, everyone knew I could do it. I'm on the direction of the cross. I'm obviously good. Everyone out here is good. Right. But like I, in terms of keeping that spot, I knew I had to be, you know, really good. So I was really trying to just sell a lot of good self-talk and just telling yourself like, you, you'll be okay. You got this. Everything's all good. Trust in yourself. You'll be in the right position. You'll make some saves. So, um, yeah. and your defense will help you out. And no matter what you've got, your, your, your friends are still there. They're going to help you out. Your coach is still there. They've got your best interest in mind. Totally true. Totally true. Um, well, cool. Is there one game in particular that that stands out as like the best game that you've played as a goalie? I mean, probably that Notre Dame game. All right. Um, Let's, that's a great I mean, segue. Like, great segue. <laughs> definitely the best day to have your best game. If that makes yeah. sense. That was not pick a better time to have the best game of my life. Um, I think that was that was something crazy. I've, I've had some really good games, but I thought that game was that game was definitely something different in terms of a. Uh, what I've done most, most, I mean, I've had some probably better games when I was in high school or like club ball. I've had some really good yeah. games, but like at least at Drexel, that was, that was my, by far my best game. Yeah. Well, the stakes are so high um, and you play yeah. really well. I mean, I'm, I mean, that's a great segue. So I got, I got the video. Cool. Can I share it? We'll kind of talk through some okay. saves. Yeah, most definitely. All right, man. All right. And... Okay. Um, let me just make sure you can hear this, right? Least amount. I can, yes. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so I got some plays here. I got so this is just to set some context. First round NCAA tournament uh, facing Notre Dame. You guys are CAA champs, so you got the the berth. Um, yep. And you know Notre Dame's a powerhouse, so uh, number six seed. Uh, first question I have is actually about equipment. Um, this Warrior throat guard. Have you have you always used that one? No, actually, they just didn't give us a throat guard with STX. They just, we just didn't get one. We were Warrior my freshman and sophomore year, and we switched to STX that this past, like, last year, and they didn't send any STX ones in the mail, and that's what we had. So, um, I actually, I, I actually ended up bought, buying an STX throat guard. STX has been uh, pretty slow right now, probably with all this COVID stuff and sending in some equipment. Um, so, uh this year I will have an STX throat guard, but um, they had not sent one in last year, which was a little strange. But uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, this one like I've ha I've had some mixed thoughts about it just from the lacrosse the young kids because it's got it's like it's just it's a dangle like it just dangles there, um, and yeah. I know a lot of people have broken them because you know you take that impact um, and it's just you know it's not kind of fixed and they kind of flop. Look, they yeah, flop. flop. And it looks like there's a lot of space right there. Yeah, you would think it doesn't really, the ball doesn't really fit. Do it doesn't that. fit in there? Okay. But I have had like, I've had like a slow bouncer from like a pole when I had someone shoot on me and I stepped to the side and my throat guard jumped up and I got hit in the jaw. Um, and after that, I, I got an STX throat guard pretty quickly. But, yeah. um, 
but that's yeah, one, pretty one shot to the jaw will make it will make it question a lot yeah, of life I, decisions I, you know <laughs> yeah I've gotten a gazillion shots of it, so like but that one definitely really spooks me out um but yeah that's i've definitely gotten that question a lot um about that about that throw card yeah yeah interesting um how come you picked number 32 how come you wear wear 32 um I was 14 in high school. I love like four and 14. I loved Matt Ward, who actually, actually coincidentally was the color commentator for this game, which okay. was really cool. He was the reason I was 14. Um, but one day the coach just texted all the freshmen was like, hey, here are all the numbers that are open. First come, first serve. I was at physical therapy because I'd hurt my foot. Didn't look at my phone for like 45 minutes. That was the only number that was like not like 39 or something really bad, like something that I... I wouldn't want to be. So I thought 32 is okay. I stuck with it and then was probably going to change it after my freshman year, but freshman year went really well. I didn't want to change it. I thought it looked fine. Um, and I've, I've really kind of grown to it. So I, I, I really liked it. Got it. Uh, first save I want to take a look at is at 56 seconds. Uh, we'll just watch the They're off for the one nothing start here. Just getting things underway in Denver. And Blumenthal makes the save on the front. Nice save. So it's an interesting play because he, um, let me back it up. Because normally like when someone's sweeping down the alley, like they have the stick in their outside hand, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's where you see a lot of shots. And this guy, you know, he sort of beats the defender um, and has the stick in his inside hand and in his, in his left. Uh, but talk, do you remember, do you remember these plays by the way? These oh yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. good. But talk us through this one, kind of what, what you're seeing if, if you could. Yeah, I mean, kind of as a coach, you're kind of taught, you know, make them, don't let them shoot that inside pipe. You know what I mean? I'm kind of probably hugging the pipe a little too much on this one, um, giving them maybe a little too much of that far pipe, but you're kind of forcing him to go there. Yeah. And I, he, he's a lefty, so I'm able to match sticks with him because the lefty on the righty goalie. So that makes it pretty easy. You can just kind of match sticks and he telegraphs it, kind of ducks his head. It's, it was kind of just, that was kind of easier because lefty on a righty and um, you kind of know where he's shooting it. You don't want to give up that inside pipe. It makes it a little too easy on the defender and make him go to the middle. And we've got uh, our defender, Pat Udovich. He's a big body. He's not afraid to lay some lumber. So he, he actually kind of let up on this one. But uh, you kind of make force the, force the attackman to go into the middle and go far side. Yep, love it. And kind of going back to that theme of body saves, it looks like that one kind of catches you in the knee, right? Yeah, I think it actually hit like the plastic in my stick. I'm not really okay. sure though. Yeah, but, I wish uh, I wish I had like this high def 4K video because sometimes I'm like, did that? You can't really was, see, but yeah. But just kind of forcing to go off, uh, go far side, and then jump down there. Yep. Well, that's like so uh, the the game just started, right? I mean, you, well, actually, yeah. you get you've given up one goal. It's one nothing Notre Dame, but it's thirteen thirty six left in the game. So that's got to feel pretty good. Like we're we're talking about like yeah. I don't feel calm unless I get that first save, and you get that first save pretty early. Yeah, that's something that was huge for me, especially in a game like Notre Dame. I, I haven't had too many games where I've had shooters like that. Um, so I, that was definitely something that I really needed. Um, and it just definitely that that helped kind of propel me into moving forward into that game. So that was that was huge, especially yeah. getting with your stick. That's even bigger. Yeah. What do you guys like as a team just got to carry out? You're, you're going against Notre Dame, right? Like what, you know, big, big powerhouse. What, what, what's the, the chat around, you know, the Drexel team the week before going into this game? Um, you know, I think, I think a lot of the guys really thought that we had a good shot. Um, and I, we knew we had a really good team and we kind of, we were rolling, we were on like a nine game win streak at that time. We, nice. yeah. a lot of these games, you know, teams were hanging around, but we weren't at too much. I mean, we, we go up in the CA championship game and we're up like, 10 to two at halftime. Like mm -hmm. we're kind of rolling a little bit. We had the slow start in the semis, but we were, we were kind of rolling and we were just kind of, you know, we're going to play our game. They got to play in the same field as us. And you know, the pressure's on them. I mean, they're Notre Dame. We're Drexel. Yeah. We've only tournament one other time. Um, so pressure's on them and we we're just going to play our game. And we knew we had a really, we had a really well-rounded team every, we didn't have a ton of weaknesses, kind of like they did. Notre Dame had no weaknesses. It kind of seemed like every single player on their team was a strength. I think they yeah. might have been the most well-rounded team in the, in the country. So I think we were really well-rounded. I think we uh, we were just going to go. They have to play on the same field as us, and I think uh, we really showed that, and we kind of definitely earned some respect. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. 
Um, all right, next one I want to look at is this play right here. Them for the Irish going up against Jimmy Coida for Drexel. And Notre Dame trying to answer that one ricocheted off the shot. And the Irish. That's a pure positioning save, huh? So just yeah. if you're if you're just listening to the to the audio, uh, guy's got the ball at X, throws it throws it to the right, and you sort of like right when you turn around, like he is I don't know what like five yards outside. I mean that's a that's pretty yeah. close. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean he's got to stick low, so and he's close enough where it's going to be hard to pull that back up. So I can kind of see he's going kind of a little low worm burner, and that's what I was talking about earlier with dropping to my knees i think there's a that hit my that would hit one hit my thigh or something that was something from dropping to my knees so that's one of those things where just kind of propelling my body to the ground i wasn't making that save with my stick that's for sure i mean he's he's very close to you said and he kind of got a step down so just getting my body behind i'm in looks like i'm in pretty good positioning um so that's one of those one of those drills that you do do when like uh the turns and then you got to turn into the shooter and then kind of got to set and see it really quick i think that's something one of those drills and shoots it low and I dropped to my knees and make a save. So uh, that's kind of what it was going on in that one. Yeah. Yeah. When they're in that close, you know, and, and it's hands free, right? I mean, he's got a hands free rip and he can step into it. <clears throat> the only way you make the save is, is that read him and beat him. And, and you could see like he's, his hands are low um, and he hasn't even released it yet. And you can all, you can already see your, your level sinking um, anticipating yeah. that low shot which it does come and you can't really see, but you're saying it, it, yeah, it kind of ricochets off you. Um, maybe yes, it catches like you in the leg. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, two minutes. Scanning the field. It's going to happen again here. If they can get the ball to X. Instead, Gray was. I love it. N another body save right there. Maybe that one caught you in the stick, but. Um, yeah. Positioning, right? I mean, positioning. So this is this one's. He's in close, but very low angle. Um, and you know, I think a lot of times shooters are expecting you to sort of move out of the way or like lose your positioning. Um, and he shoots it. You just stay home, make the save. Yeah, I mean that's one of those things you kind of got to trying to force them to go far side like that first save. And I'm kind of leaning to the post a little bit. Maybe honestly a little bit too much. There probably a lot of nerves. And he shoots it towards that pipe, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm gonna do my best not to give him that near side because that's just much too easy. I'm gonna force him to make a play around me on the far side, and he kind of just shoots it right at me. So that's that positioning thing where the nerves kind of can go away because you know trusting myself that shots like that are gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to see from the angle. So he does he tries he tries to sneak it near side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It looks like it bounced too. Yeah, it bounced too. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Interesting. All right, cool. Love it. 307. Wait, not 307. That's 357. Can't read my own handwriting. It's like hard play, and you love to see that uh, from a player kind of in a non traditional area down in Florida as a lacrosse player. Nice save. Nice save, right? I think, you know, if we're being honest, these are the ones that as a goalie, you want to make right the guys he's sort of sweeping across his, his momentum's not going towards the goal he probably took that shot because the flag was down uh but still like these are the saves that like for me get, get me really pumped up because like i should be making those saves and when i do make those saves like i feel good <laughs> um yeah talk to me about this one yeah i mean so this was kavanaugh like their best player the tour time finalist and honestly he kind of had me beat um came around the side and i kind of just kicked my foot up and that actually hit my foot and then um trickled out of bounds so uh i kind of get a little lucky there and i just kind of play you know law of averages and kind of swing my foot out there and make make a, a nice quick uh kick save yeah yeah love it awesome um 449 watch out here nice save Ooh. big save from blue so this one um Crank shot, maybe top center. I like this positioning right here. If we could just take a look at this, this is kind of what we were talking about earlier in the chat. You know, nice athletic stance, heels on the goal line, um, feet probably, you know, a little wider than shoulder width for you there, um, but just hands out, ready to explode. Um, and you just see this one all the way, track it, high shot, make the save. Yeah. I mean, so this is 
they, I, they didn't really – we knew these Mays could just fire the ball. We see it in film. It was, it was pretty intimidating. And they honestly didn't – this was really the only deep, you know, outside from the midi shot mm-hmm. that they got. Up. Luckily, I saved it. Um, but, I mean, I just kind of – staying patient. I, I say really patient. You don't really dip that much and just explode high. And it, it was a – it was a rocket, as you can see, the ball went really high up in the air. So, um, definitely, just that's one of those things. Staying patient, I think, something that uh, I really got a lot better as the year went on, and um, you kind of see it, it all came together in that shot. Yeah, love it. Staying patient on the clear too. Like a lot of times, young goalies freak out uh, when when they when they make a save and they don't initially see anybody wide open, and and yeah. that's kind of exactly what happens here. Like you make the save, you look over there, maybe that's not a good look. Um, right. But just let, let the play develop, right. Go out the back of the, of the, of the crease if you need to. Um, and, and someone will, uh, get free and that's what happens here. Yeah. Yeah. That most definitely, I think, uh, you got a lot of time and you also can just, as you said, go behind and, uh, make it easier on your defenseman. And you, you got a lot, it's a lot more time than you may think, um, when you're on a clear. So just staying patient on that clear as well is really huge. Yeah. Started, hey, this Donnelly guy is going to be pretty good. And they paired up well as McCann let fly for Notre Dame. Man, another positioning save. So this one, he's sweeping from top right, kind of sweeps top center. By the time he releases it, he's pretty, he's pretty, I don't know if that's like nine, 10 yards. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, this is the 12 meter for women's, but the women's arc is back, is back here. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know what that is. But anyway, good positioning and bam, another one, another one right out, right off the body. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he kind of just shoots it at me. Um, I think that also hit the plastic. Honestly, I'm not. I can't really remember. But uh, yeah, yeah, you just just kind of trusting in yourself, and he was right down the middle. So I mean, just wasn't as good placement, I would say, by him, and I was able to capitalize on it. Yeah. Are you, um, when we talk about like communication, are you a big, you know, loud communicator, or do you kind of let you know, let someone else on your team, um, help with those calls. Yeah. I mean, you ca- I kind of have to be in college, at least with us. I mean, I, I'm, that's not really my personality all the time. I'm not like rah, rah and all that, but I mean, mm-hmm. once you're in the goal, you have to kind of, I probably, we definitely should have slid here. We probably should have slid from, uh, the guy covering number eight, um, who did end up sliding, just slided maybe a tad too late. So, mm-hmm. um, and we also go up the middle, which, which is something we really try not to do. We're trying to keep guys down the side. Um, Cause once you're in the middle, you've got, you can pass it anywhere. If we keep them down the side, I think it makes the rotations a lot easier. Um, mm. So um, probably should communicate a little bit better. Give them the slide a little bit sooner. Got it. Love it. Um, all right. And then what, just kind of talking about this game, right? You know, you're, you're, you're it's eight, eight, go, you know, tie game going into the fourth quarter, um, you know, against Notre Dame and you guys got to be feeling like, you know, we got to be feeling pretty good. I, I would think like, if you can hang with this team, like the longer you hang with them, the more you start to believe. Oh yeah. I mean, I was, I was like, almost like laughing to the point where I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like, this is really cool. Like I'm playing well, the team's playing really well. And we're right there with Notre Dame. Like this is, this is nuts. Um, and I, that fourth quarter started, I was like, you know what? I kind of did what I kind of set out to do a little bit. Like, I, I proved I belong. Like, let's just go and have fun. And like, I was really relaxed in that fourth quarter and I really didn't feel a lot of pressure. And I, I played one of the best fourth quarters I've ever played. So I think that was something that I just, it just a lot of the, the more I relaxed, the more I was just way better. And I think it, it kind of showed in, in the end of this game. Yeah. So we go to the end of the game and this is just one of the craziest sequences, uh, well, first of all, actually, let's take a look at this save because this one's pretty cool. Working up from X, couldn't get it by Blumenthal. And for the first time all season. Wait a minute, do we miss it? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Kavanaugh's got the two goals, no assists, and trying to sneak one. Oh, wait, that's not the one. That's not the one I wanted to see, but anyway. <laughs> the double save. Yeah, that's that's the one at the end, but there's one where it like trickles behind you and it looks like it's gonna go in. And uh and this one right here. This one right here. So. Give it to get it to him through. Oh <laughs> man, that's crazy. So yeah, I mean you kind of make the save and 
you know, kind of turn around and the ball sort of trickling ever so slowly to the goal line. Um, I, I love that one. Anyway. Yeah, that's, that's also dropping to my knees. I think that's something, I don't know if I make that save, if I stay up upright, maybe, I mean, maybe I'm making my stick, but I'm kind of just plopping to the ground and good point. Yeah. Sun, and, uh, trickles behind me and I, I cover it up. So that was, uh, that was really, that was really huge. Yeah. Um, this is the sort of the, the final sequence here. It's still eight to eight, no scoring really in the fourth. I mean, both defenses, both goalies were playing great. I mean, Antamon was playing really great as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, does that, as a goalie, does that fire you up when you see the other goalie playing well? Um, not as much. I really, I don't, I try not to think about, but I mean like a little bit, but he was playing absolutely unreal, especially, um, I don't think he really got a ton of shots in that fourth quarter, but when he was kind of, we were trying to pour it on and trying to make a comeback in that second and third, he was like 10 saves in a row. Like he was, yeah. he was absolutely. Ridiculous. So I don't really think about it too much, um, but I could tell he was playing really, really well as well. Yeah. So this is the final sequence here. And I was going to ask about this positioning. I think you kind of have mentioned it. Like maybe you're a little bit over leaning on one edge uh, mm -hmm. on, on your right side. Would you agree with that? Or is that kind of like something yeah, that you're trying agree. to do? It's honestly something that I haven't really realized until this kind of Thanksgiving and winter break. Um, I was kind of trying to fix that a little bit, not leaning so much into that pipe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's watch this final play here. Here he is trying to shake free from Quinn. He found York and another one nearly spun home. And Blumenthal covers. Man. What what a save. What a save. Nice. I mean, <laughs> this is, he catches it. I mean, Oh man, I don't know where that one gets you, but you get it probably in a stick, yeah. I think it like hit my like inner thigh or my calf or something. I think yeah. it was my calf. A calf. Well, that's the worst place yeah. to take one, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I actually do remember that one, feeling that one a little bit, but uh, yeah. I mean, that's just a millionth example from this game of just throwing my body at the ball, and he was pretty close, and my stick was close, um, but just throwing my body and hoping it hits me, and luckily it does. So. Um, just trying to be as explosive as I can. Yeah, love it. Um, and then this call right here is kind of unbelievable. Yeah. Like, this guy right here gets called for interference, right? But it just goes to show yeah. you as a goalie, like, you know, it, the importance of, I'm sure you did, but like then the chaos of the moment, you got to yell, you know, your clear call. So he knows you've got the ball and you can't make any more contact. But that's a little ticky tack, if you ask me. It's not like he comes in. I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Definitely ticky tack. I mean, by the letter of the law, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like that is a foul. You're not allowed to push him. But like, are you gonna call that with really that as point in the game? To play right. eight to eight in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I mean, these kids are in the, one of the biggest moments of their lives, especially on our side, who had never been there before. Tough call to make, um, but. I honestly understand why he made it. I don't like it. I wouldn't have called it, but I, I, I'm honest enough to say that probably shouldn't have done that. Um, by the letter of the law, that is a foul, yeah, but I don't know. maybe I, it was so loud in there. I mean, I don't know any way he would be able to know that I said clear, but yeah, I don't think you make it's tough, but it, I understand it. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well then they get the ball back and end up scoring. I think I missed the double save. I think, it was like earlier, like eight minutes into the quarter. Like after. I think this is it right here. Country goes man up for yeah. a minute here. Though Drexel has handled it the first couple of times that Notre Dame's gone man up. York denied by Blumenthal. Yeah, Blumenthal. baby. <laughs> there it is right there. So this yeah. is insane. So man up, Notre Dame's man up, you know, eight to eight. Uh, early, it's early in the fourth quarter. Uh, I'm not sure who that is on Notre Dame. Rips an outside bouncer. Again, body positioning. That's the theme of the game. That's the theme of this game, yeah. right? You know, take yeah. it off the chest pad. A little bit of a rebound. He picks up his own rebound, tries to sneak it home. And then it's at that point, it's just matching sticks, yeah? Yeah, that's, that's the thing I also said before. I mean, it's a lefty on a righty, so I'm able to match the stick really well um, because he's got a stick right near mine. So um, that was just something – you know, dropping my knees again, getting my body behind it, trusting I can be in the right position and then just matching sticks and he throws it right in my stick, luckily. And so um, it worked out well. Yeah. And, I, and then I tried to force a penalty on this clear. I did this a couple of times where he's on the crease and he can't do that. And then 
I just try to force a foul and he like ducks away. I don't even know what the right call is. I've gotten that call a couple of times last year and they didn't call it and we end up turning it over. But I was trying to force a foul because he's right on the crease and they don't give it to me. But uh, um, that's one I thought thing. That's I, definitely- a, I thought that's exactly what you, what you were doing. Cause like, for those that don't know, like they can't, they can't make contact with you even in the follow through. And oh, yeah. Right. And, and as long as you um, are doing like a natural passing m- movement, you know, like yeah. you can't like try and induce but it's a natural passing motion. If, if your follow through makes contact, that's a free clear. And I, I knew that's exactly what you were going for. But yeah, he does at the last second, he kind of like bends back out of the way. So, so I, I don't know what the call is supposed to be. I'm not a ref, but because he does duck out of the way. And when I've gotten that call in the past, they didn't move out of the way. They just kind of jumped up in the air. But I, I kind of find it hard to believe in the rule book. It says if he moves out, of, tries to move out of the way and still make contact. But who knows? Yeah, that's just one, you know. One that, but I'd love to know. Yeah, I feel like if he's trying to move out of the way, like, I don't know, he gets a little bit more benefit of the doubt. Um, I will say by the time you throw the ball, though, you're out of the crease, too. Well, I've got a foot in, so... I, I guess I didn't think about it, but I it's mean, close, but I don't, I don't think that's the reason they didn't call it, but I don't know. Yeah. It, it's a close play, but um, yeah. Well, cool, man. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Thank you for going yeah, through that cool. and talking through some of those saves. Uh, good mm-hmm. luck in your upcoming, in your upcoming season. Um, I guess games get started. When's your guys first game? We go to UMBC, which will be cool going back to Maryland. Um, like February 19th, a little, we usually start later than most teams. Um, we usually, uh, we scrimmage pen, like, their like first week or whatever and then yeah. we'll play first game the week after so when a lot of teams start pretty early they've been moving closer and closer being in february we stay um you know in that later to mid february range cool against UMB. um out of the caa so what do we got we got like delaware um towson yep. yeah delaware hofstra towson umass and Fair- nice Nice, yeah. ma'am. Well, I'll be watching. Like I said, good luck in this upcoming season, Ross. Uh, it was a pleasure. Pleasure having you on the show. Great, great chat and lacrosse goalie with you. Um, if you had to leave the kids out there with the, with the final piece of advice, what, what would that be? Uh, get as many shots as possible. Find someone to shoot on you. Get as many shots as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, try to learn from whatever goalies you're around, uh, whatever coaches you can find. Um, I know some, it might be tougher, but depending on where you are, but get as many shots and get the right instruction, preferably by younger goalies, not these older goalies who play the game a lot differently. Younger goalies. Love it. Um, yeah. Are you do the social media? If people want to hit you up or give you a follow. Yeah. You- I Ross B underscore 14 on Instagram or something like that. Um, cool. So on there, my Twitter is something similar to that as well. Um, maybe with the underscore in a different spot, but it's something around the realm of Ross B underscore 14. Awesome. I'll link up to that when the show comes out. Uh, Ross, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on.